The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. The Federal Communications Commission has a 332-page regulation it intends to put in place on February 26th, which by my calculation is 15 days from now. It is uh, a regulation, a massive regulation, that it will not make public until after it is issued. A Republican member of this commission, Federal FCC Commissioner Ajit Pai, is with us. How are you, sir? I am great. Thanks for having me on, Mark. Well, Mr. Commissioner, you've been out there uh, beating the pots and pans, banging them, trying to get people's attention. First of all, how many commissioners are there? There are five of us, uh, three of the President's Party and two Republicans, and I am one of the two Republicans. And so this will go through, won't it? Unfortunately, it looks like uh, the writing uh, was on the wall once the chairman made the decision and uh, sent the President's plan to regulate the Internet to all of the fellow commissioners. Uh, this seems to have been in the bag for a while. You say the president's plan. Aren't you folks? Aren't you on an independent commission? Well, we're supposed to be, and historically we have been. But in unprecedented fashion, uh, right after the November elections, the president announced not just what he wanted the FCC to do, but the very legal foundation by which he wanted uh, the FCC to do it. And uh, you know, quite, to no one's surprise, even though the agency had been pursuing alternatives before that, uh, by the time this 332-page document landed on my desk, lo and behold. Uh, what is in there mimics in every essential detail the president's plan. And the American people will not know what's going to happen to the Internet until after this regulation is adopted. Is that correct? That's one of the most remarkable things about it. 332 pages uh, for the first time, you know, a monumental shift in favor of government control of the Internet, and the American public is not going to be able to see it until after the FCC votes on it. And that's something I've called for to change, uh, that we should be as open and transparent as the Internet itself and just post it so that people can weigh in uh, with the FCC and with the administration. What is this obsession with controlling the Internet? Is it because the government doesn't have its grubby hands on it yet? Well, in this area in particular, it's really perplexing that if you look, if you were able to see this document, you would see that nowhere does the agency identify any kind of systemic harm in the Internet economy. But nonetheless, it invents one in order to regulate it. And so it's this classic situation where you know, we're adopting a solution that won't work to a problem that doesn't exist using legal authority we don't have. And that's just a recipe for disaster for any agency. But especially when it comes to the Internet, I think people should be concerned. I tell you, this is just, it, it is stunning what's going on in this country, what's going on with this government. Let me ask you this, sir. What are some of the major things in this 332-page monstrosity that the FCC intends to do to us? Well, first and foremost, it is rate regulation of the kind we used to do for railroad monopolies in the 19th century and telephone monop uh, monopolies in the t early 20th century. Second of all, it is opening the door... Well, let me stop you there. Rate regulation of whom? of uh, basically of any broadband Internet service provider, uh, whether it is the rates they charge to consumers for service or the relationship they have with edge providers like Netflix or Facebook, essentially the agency would be micromanaging now how all of those consumer relationships work. And that's something that, you know, a few thousand of us in Washington are ill-prepared to make a decision on. Well, I'll say, and why? Is there some massive uh, abuse going on somewhere that I haven't even noticed myself in my own life? Believe me, if there were, this document, which you're not able to see, would be flash, you know, there would be neon letters identifying what the problems are. But the fact that there aren't any of those massive problems indicates to me that something else is afoot. And what it is, I'm not sure, but the end result is government control of virtually every aspect of the Internet. So they're going to control, regulate businesses and people who conduct business on the Internet, including taxing them? Uh, basically, yes. So we open up the door to um, billions of dollars in new taxes. And the way we do that is by reclassifying broadband service as essentially just another telephone service. And so you, if you or your listeners look on your phone bill and you see a line item that says universal service fee, well, that right now doesn't apply to your Internet bill. But once we adopt this on February 26th, that bill is going to skyrocket because by law, 
you know, we have to start uh, assessing broadband fees, uh, universal service fees, they're called. Um, and that you know, one independent group, a left-leaning group, estimated that this would be $11 billion in new taxes on Internet access. And I don't know about you, but I haven't heard many people complaining that their broadband bill is too low and they'd like to pay more taxes to the federal government uh, you know, to make up uh, uh, to the difference. So it's likely that everybody, directly or indirectly, that uses the Internet is going to see an increase in their costs. That's exactly right, and that's just for rates. Uh, there are all these other things in the document uh, in terms of the FCC micromanaging what service plans you're allowed to choose from. Uh, it is, uh, it, it's a document that goes well beyond what I ever imagined the administration would propose, but uh, unfortunately that's where we are. Will it be the same people running Obamacare running this? Well, I've got to tell you that I've heard from a lot of people who are amazed at how the entire process uh, that this issue has progressed on and the substance of it mimics Obamacare, that, you know, Washington bureaucracy would you know, keep this plan in the dark, it wouldn't release it until after it was voted on, and you have the FCC or any federal agency you know, essentially micromanaging the private sector, something that you know, over the past 20 years has been an unpre- really an unqualified American success story. You know, this this is enormously troubling. They're doing this, they're trying to do it very quickly, relatively quietly. The American people don't get to see what these regulations are going to look like. We have you to thank for giving us some of the information. Now, this this isn't the way a representative government's supposed to operate, is it, sir? I, I don't think so, and that's part of the reason why you know, I felt compelled to speak out, even though our rules prohibit us from releasing the document. I decided I was not going to sit there quietly for the next couple of weeks and just, you know, let the uh, agency leadership, uh, you know, force us to vote in behind closed doors. I was going to speak out, and you know, if I get in trouble, so be it. But at the end of the day, my conscience is lies with the American consumer, with the law, and with good policy. And I'm, you know, so long as I have the privilege of serving in the FCC, I'm, that's not going to change. Let me just say on the air. If you wish, you don't have to accept right now. If anybody takes any sort of action against you, legal or otherwise, I will represent you for free. If you'd like, it's up to you, but I'm a pretty damn good litigator. Now, Mr. Commissioner, let me ask you another question. The other Republican on this commission, does he or she agree with you? He does. Uh, Michael O'Reilly, he came onto the commission about a year and a half ago, and uh, we are of the same opinion that this is a massive power grab, and it's government at its worst, regulating uh, when it doesn't have authority to solve a problem that doesn't exist. Other than this chairman, Tom Wheeler, who are the other two Democrats? Uh, The two Democrats are Mignon Clyburn, who was appointed in 2009. All right, slow down. That would be Clyburn, whose father is the number three Democrat in the House, correct? That is correct. Mm-hmm. And uh, the other Democrat is uh, Jessica Rosenworcel, who was appointed in May of 2012. Mm-hmm. And what did uh, Jessica do before? Do you know? Uh, she worked on Capitol Hill um, for the most part on the Senate Commerce Committee for Senator Rockefeller and uh, Senator Inouye. Well, Mr. Commissioner, we very much appreciate your uh, bravery because I'm sure you're persona non grata around that building. Uh, but we uh, we definitely appreciate it. Keep speaking out. If you need to come back, let us know, okay? Absolutely. And you're, you and your listeners can follow me to Adajit Pi FCC. I'm going to keep speaking out on Twitter and, and over on the radio, whatever way I can get the message. All out. right. I God bless it. you. Thank you. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.